Bane are working on next generation graphics. Oh God. Greetings fellow Flight Simmer and welcome to the reaction review with me Gripper Sim. Is the race between X-Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 beginning? Is it a race or will X-Plane overtake Microsoft 2020 after its release? Will X-Plane 11 have better more realistic flight modelling than Microsoft 2020? And will X-Plane follow up with extreme ultimate ultimate scenery? And most importantly, have X-Plane started its next-gen simulator and how can I prove this? Coming up. But first, let's have a look at X-Plane's new beta version of Vulkan, which means it should run faster on X-Plane 11.5, how to install it safely and what performance improvements I got on my PC build. The build for my simulator is as follows. The motherboard is a Gigabyte Z390. The processor is an Intel Core i99 processor running at 3.6 gigahertz. I don't overclock it. RAM, I have 32 gigabytes of RAM. Graphics, I have an EVGA GeForce RTX 1080 Ti. Ooh, looky me. And for storage, actually, for X-Plane, I use an M.2 one terabyte drive for X-Plane 11 because it'll run faster on that drive. I also have a 250 gigabyte M.2 for the operating system and other all sorted storage items. Installing Vulkan. Okay, first of all, update your drivers. The second things you want to install, well, at least I did, I installed a second version of X-Plane 11, just in case it got buggy. So what you do is you go into your X-Plane main folder, select an X-Plane installer, and it gives you an option to install a second copy of X-Plane, which is great. You select where you want it to install, what sceneries you would like, and that's pretty much it. And then you're gonna restart X-Plane. When you restart X-Plane, you've got to go into the graphic settings and select use Vulkan for faster rendering and then we start one more time. Now, having a look at this footage, what do you think that looks like? This is standard X-Plane scenery, no add-ons here. But what frame rates do I need for Flight Simulator? Well, let's put it this way. Remember, we all went to the cinema and we all packed ourselves in like sardines eating stale popcorn. Uh, well, those movies were shown at 24 to 25 frames per second. Now, no one ever complained about the frame rates when we're watching movies. And when we're playing a game, I feel it's pretty much the same. Now, for X-Plane 11, uh, I find, personally, that all the videos I produce are 25 frames a second. I will accept 25 frames a second, and I'll move all my graphic sliders way up as far as I can, and then I will leave it as long as it's uh, over 25 frames a second. I've got the sliders up all the way up, and I'm not using Vulkan yet. I haven't touched on Vulcan. It's 11.5 and I haven't used Vulcan. Let's see what frame rates you've been watching throughout this video. Okay, let's hit done. And we're getting 25 plus change. 25, 26, 24, sometimes 23. Now, that's what you've been watching without Vulcan. So I hope my point gets across to you that I feel that 24, maybe 30, if you like, uh, 25 frames a second is quite smooth. So let's do uh, Vulcan and switch Vulcan on and see what improvements I'm getting with regards to frame rates. Okay, so I've just popped in here. I've got Vulcan on and I'm getting 50 frames a second. That's an improvement of 25 frames a second. So let's say, uh, yeah, that's about 25 frames a second. Now it's a little bit less now, so it's about 20. So we're getting about 20 frames a second. Now I believe through my research, and God knows I've been doing research this week, you'll get about 20 frames per second improvement on X-Plane, which gives you room to improve, or certainly to improve your graphics, because yes, you can move those sliders up further now and still get your frame rates that you're happy with. Okay, let's lower those sliders and see what I get uh, with regards to frames per second. Okay, so uh, I've lowered the reflection detail a little bit and I'm just taking all the other sliders down one notch. Just one notch. I've no shadows on scenery either. And let's see uh, what performance boost I get with this. Okay, so I'm back and immediately it's 100 frames per second. Uh, it's going to drop down because I'm going to start flying now and turning. It's reading all the scenery into memory, etc. So it's about 90 frames a second there and drops down a little bit. So I'm going to say 80 frames per second, okay? Just to be safe. Um, so that's for me, 55 frames a second extra, okay? That's, that's huge. That's an extra 55 frames a second to what I'm pretty much used to. That is huge, that is massive. Now, I, I know I've got a bigger machine, but I can see you guys uh, getting um, very similar frame rates. So what does this mean? Okay, this gets me thinking about what I said earlier. Are X-Plane 11 getting ready for ultimate, ultimate graphics? 
At what about VR improvements? Now, uh, I'm going to show you a clip shortly of Austin Myers' video that he does with Michael Brown from X-Force PC from time to time. I put links in the description below. I do suggest you watch them. Austin Myers is incredibly knowledgeable in aerodynamics. He's also a long-time pilot. He's the creator of X-Plane 11 slash Laminar Research and he is one of the very few people in the world who knows how to translate real-world flying into a flight simulator. And he also works uh, for the aviation military in the United States of America. So uh, a very intelligent guy. He knows what he's doing. So let's have a look at the highlights of his video that he produced. And let's have a look at what's relevant to you and me. Okay, hey, Austin Meyer here. We're going to talk about X-Plane 1150 Vulcan, which is out now. All right, let me talk about why we're doing this. Uh, everybody already knows faster is better because it's smoother. No question, we all like a faster sim. But there's two specific targets I'm trying to hit here. This is a mission. Okay, this is a mission. It has two very specific short-term targets and one long-term target. Short-term target number one, virtual reality, VR. VR breaks down if it runs too slow and if there's any stutters. I want to support VR fast, smooth, with no loss of sync between the two eyes, no stutters. This makes VR, uh, it takes VR from a science experiment to a freaking solid mainstream thing, something you can really count on working um, with, uh, with the high speed and the no pauses. It makes X-Plane better for VR. The other target I wanted to hit is professional sims. We're getting tremendous interest from the military. Uh, there's plenty of uh, six-figure dollar, you know, X-Plane sims in the world now that have multi-projectors, including the electric vertical takeoff the landing airplane I'm working on. We have a sim that is uh, quite a bit bigger than this room, yes. but there's two very specific short-term targets I'm trying to hit, virtual reality and high-end sims. There's a longer-term target I'm trying to hit, which is obviously ultimate, ultimate, ultimate scenery. And for us to go to ultimate, high-def, incredible, amazing scenery, we need absolute total control. Control of every texture, control of every vertex. We need to operate directly on the card and everything needs to be preloaded, ready to go. We can't have ultimate scenery and use the OpenGL infrastructure with all the pausing and uncertainty and OpenGL's constant cluelessness that that implies. So um, we had to rewrite the entire sim from the, the entire graphics. The entire graphics of the sim have been uh, rewritten from the inside out to make this possible. But uh, it's done and it's paying off in spades. You and do need to choose betas in Steam if you want 1150 in Steam. Do you know how to choose a beta in Steam? Not in Steam. Okay. You right click on your X-Plane icon on your Steam desktop, a properties menu drops down, and in the properties menu from your X-Plane icon that you right clicked on, you select a little checkbox, I want my betas. And once you've checked that little box, the next time you launch Steam, it will automatically update to, to the latest beta. And we are uh, hitting both the short-term targets now, which is better virtual reality and better uh, professional uh, platform experience. And we will, of course, when the time is right, unveil the next generation of scenery, which of course we're working on. Just repeat that again, Austin. Of course, when the time is right, unveil the next generation of scenery, which of course we're working on. Haha, -ha, I knew it! I never have the ciders up to max. This is just a show. Now, I've also added Orbex GB South, Orbex London City, Reality XP, Max FX, Sound FX, and I think that's about it for now. So, the frames per second I'm getting is just above 25, 27, 28, and sometimes 30. Uh, later on, it got better, but we'll say, let's say about 25. Okay, so 25 frames a second. Let's switch on Vulcan and see the difference. Okay, so I've really packed it with add-ons, and the difference to me looks like 38, 40, between, oh, we'll say 35 frames a second, okay? We'll say 35. So that's 10 frames a second, probably more, actually. So as you can see, if I lower the sliders down one notch, I'm going to get 60, which I did. 60 frames a second, which is more than enough, I feel. Now, those of you with lower powered machines, you'll see the same results. So you'll be able to up those sliders as well. Uh, so obviously, the more powerful machine you have, the better frames per second you get. So earlier I said, will X-Plane have better flight physics, more realistic flying than uh, Microsoft 2020? Well, at the moment, I think X-Plane will have better, more realistic flight physics than Microsoft 2020. Why do I say this? Well, because of this man. I feel a little bit like a Mythbuster today. So, as I said, Austin Marr knows a great deal about flying physics. He's also integrated into a flight simulator and he's very, very knowledgeable. I know that because I'm a flight instructor for many years and I can tell the way he talks and his accuracy. And of course, he knows all this and he's the creator of X-Plane. Do Microsoft have somebody like this? Do they have a guru, if you like? 
that knows about aerodynamics and flight simming. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to his channel because he does keep uh, people updated as to the very details of what physics he's using and how he's implementing it into a flight simulator. The good thing about these videos is most intelligent people can't explain a damn thing. They know how it works but they can't explain it. However, Austin can. He can explain it quite well and he's quite animated and enjoyable to watch and I have to say I do love his sound effects. They're very, very good. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Austin. I can't help it. Look, you, you, they, lads, they don't watch this anyway. Yep.